Hello coaches, my name is Jason Grubb, I'm currently the Head of Goalkeeping for the Houston Dynamo Academy. I oversee our academy goalkeepers from the ages of 12 all the way up through to 19. Today what we're going to do is we're going to follow our pre-professional goalkeepers, our under 17s and under 19s through a session. We're going to follow them from small group training all the way through to their integration with the team. So coaches, to start with, I'd like to give you a little bit more context to the session that we're going to talk about today. And we'll start with the periodization. This session was run match day minus two. So at this stage of the week, we're starting to place more focus on what we're trying to do and how we're trying to play against our opponents. So the team's focus itself was looking at transitional moments in the final third, going from a defending moment to an attacking moment. With that information, I was able to then design a session for our goalkeepers, uh, looking at transitional moments from an attacking moment into a defending moment. The allotted time that I had was 40 minutes and I had four goalkeepers total, two from the under 17s and two from the under 19s. Coaches, as you watch the session through, I'd like you to ask yourself a few questions. One, does the session steadily progress and become more and more complex? Two, are the goalkeepers being forced into match-like decisions? And three, what would you change? How would you adapt this session for your environment? For me, it's probably one of the most important parts of the session. It's important for me to affect the group's psychological aspects right from the start. I want this part of the session to be really engaging, really active and extremely fun. And as you see, all, with, all the lads are playing as a one-touch reaction game using a shuttlecock. From there, we're going to progress into a, a little bit of activation using the ball and using the bands. The bands are important. They're there just to switch on the glutes, activate the hamstrings and activate the core. This is just another creative way of also including the ball so that we're then working a little bit of hand-eye coordination in there as well. So at this stage of the session, we're looking at the goalkeeper's role of being in possession of the ball. I'm giving the goalkeepers an option to play around between the four and the five and play through into the six. At this stage, I've given them no touch restriction. I've just told them to play whatever the game demands. If they can play at one touch, do so. If they have to take two or three touches, do so, but make it game realistic. As a progression, I want to be able to take options away from the goalkeeper to now force the goalkeeper into making more decisions. So you'll see it's a real simple setup. At any point, one of the support players can turn their back on the goalkeeper, forcing the goalkeeper to change the direction of the ball, change the decision, and move the ball into a, into a new area. As a third progression, the goalkeeper can now play into me, um, and then I can play any goalkeeper. Once I play the goalkeeper, I'm giving them a bad back pass to deal with, so it's the imperfect situation, then I'm also putting them under pressure. So not only do they have to deal with the imperfect back pass, but now they have to be able to break the line of the press and find a solution to get, to get out of that situation. At this stage of the session, we're working on the goalkeeper's cognitive awareness, their acceleration and deceleration to get into position, and then their decision making with their technical execution. So as we progress from our handling, we're going to get into our 1v1 game. As you can see, three goalkeepers defend the three goals. At any point, I can turn and I can attack the goals. If the goalkeeper wins possession of the ball, they can put the ball down and attack the other two. At any stage, the second attacker can join play, creating different decisions. What are we looking for? Well, we're looking for the goalkeeper to one, move on to the line of the ball quickly and make a decision. If they stay on the line of the ball to defend the goal, we're looking for them to block, react and improvise. If they move down the line of the ball, we're looking at their tight blocking shape, 
and then obviously the, the awareness to the second ball. So this is the final phase of the session before the goalkeepers are integrated in with the team. As you can see, we want to make this part of the session as game realistic and as relevant as possible. We want to make it as random as we possibly can. So we're going to start off with the goalkeeper being in possession, playing around between the four and the five. At any point, the nine, which is myself, can press the goalkeeper in a random direction, forcing the goalkeeper into making the decision. Once the goalkeeper then plays off of that, the transitional moment occurs and all of those players become attackers. So now we're looking at multiple different scenarios. The, the attacking team can shoot from distance. They can play into the area, creating one versus ones, or they can play into the wide area to create different, different types of crosses, crosses from flank or cutback crosses. If the goalkeeper gains possession of the ball, there's an option to play higher up the field. However, that player, if they're facing the goalkeeper, the goalkeeper can play. If the player turns their back on the player, that's the keeper's cue to then hold the ball. This is the first stage of the session where the goalkeepers are now integrated in with the team. As you can see, it's six versus four, six attackers versus the four defenders. The defenders start off with in what we call our we shape, so we have the ball, so we're, we're bigger, we're more expansive. On the first pass, that's the transitional moment, we have to go from we to they. What we mean by they is that we have to create a density towards the direct goal channel. Uh, so the defending team are, are protecting the main frame and if they win possession of the ball, they can counter into the small counter goals. If the goalkeeper wins possession of the ball, they've got two choices. They have a top target man. If the top target man's facing them, they can play direct into them. If the top target man turns their back on them, they have to then play into the small counter attacking goals. Coaches, as you can see, we're getting to the final phase of the session. What we have is a four versus four flying changes game. In possession, the goalkeepers are constantly challenged and being put under pressure to play around and play through. Out of possession, the goalkeepers have to make decisions. Are they going to defend the area or defend the goal? You can see that so many different situations crop up through shot stopping through traffic, to one versus one situations, to second phases. This game's perfect, a perfect way to finish the session that will throw up so many different scenarios and create lots and lots of problems for the goalkeepers and back four.